There's a long time between Rockstar's games. And it's because they make huge games that are incredibly detail-oriented. In fact, sometimes that's even levied as a criticism. I saw several critiques of Red Dead 2 that said it was too detail-oriented. But as Take Two Interactive, Rockstar's parent company expresses a desire for games to come out more often, it may mean that games end up a bit shorter. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, we ask the question, Take Two wants Rockstar to make more games with less content. Should they? When Red Dead Redemption 2 came out, it had been a long time between the original and the sequel. This got a lot of people saying, maybe Rockstar should think about making more games. But what I think everybody meant was, Rockstar's making plenty of money, maybe they could add more staff and make more games with this amount of content at this level of quality. Recently, Strauss Zelnick was talking about this, and in truth, a lot of what he says isn't actually bad in any way. He was asked about the gap between games, and though he acknowledged that it had grown for quite a while, he also said this, I don't see it expanding further. In fact, I would expect in many instances it may compress. And on the surface, that sounds good. However, he then went on to talk about how you can deliver content to your consumers on an ongoing basis, which makes me a little more shaky about what he exactly means on account that implies a much more live service attitude towards the games, and that ain't been working out so great in terms of quality. He also had this to say, It's possible that the ability to deliver content on an ongoing basis for a long time after an initial release would mean that perhaps the initial release wouldn't be as long in terms of number of hours of gameplay as previously had been demanded in a world where that was all you were getting. In fact, he even specifically said, it's possible that games may be a bit shorter than they were in certain instances. And well, I will go ahead and say I'm not married to the idea of the 100 hour game. In fact, sometimes I find that to be overwhelming and too much, but I think that there's a larger context that makes this a little less great. In some ways, what you're saying here is, hey, Grand Theft Auto V or Red Dead 2 could have been a bunch of releases that we charged incrementally for and therefore probably have charged more for. Like imagine if each chapter of the story was a DLC. I mean, I do understand that some content is made episodically, but I don't think that's what they mean here. Episodic content can be actually very cool, however, a game that is as long as Grand Theft Auto, or Red Dead Redemption, or any of the main staples of the Rockstar way, kinda work the way they work, because it's all there? You can kinda tackle anything you want, just get going there, boss. All the content's there, just a matter of plowing through it if you want to. That's part of the appeal, and where in some respects that progression is very linear, to basically get as far as you can and hit a roadblock until they release the next part of it, with a game structured in the way that these games are, I think would be massively detrimental to the way that we play these games. It would come off very artificial in the way that it stops you from continuing, because it's all just supposed to be there. That's the appeal of the game. While I definitely do want DLC for my Grand Theft Auto V, guys, Remember when you promised that? I want it to supplement the game, not be part of the game. I don't want to be able to not finish the game that's structured to be an open-ended, do-whatever-you-want fest. It's kind of really contradictory. An episodic game works because it's primarily a linear story. However, the linear story in Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption isn't completely linear. You could say they're linear enough to call them linear, sure, but they exist in a totally non-linear world. If Rockstar is gonna suddenly just make completely different games, sure, I could see episodic content working, but not in this case. DLC for Grand Theft Auto has traditionally functioned as basically its own game that uses the same assets, and there's a reason why. An episodic game is one that is set up in a specific structure. In the case of Hitman, let's say, a fantastic episodic game. It was a series of open worlds that were not really actually connected in any way. Therefore, having it work in episodes didn't really interrupt the game in the way that this would. The beginning and ending of a chapter seems entirely natural. There's location changes, there's scenario changes, there's massive changes in even gameplay from episode to episode. The roadblocks don't necessarily seem unnatural. 
the gap between episodes is pretty natural because even if it was all there, there would be a loading screen, something that mentally, physically, and emotionally separates this from that. And there's none of that in the type of game that Rockstar makes. In a lot of ways, it also reads as we would really like to release something bare bones and then fill in the content with microtransactions. Because what Strauss Zelnick, CEO of Take-Two Interactive, says isn't really the language of somebody with an artistic vision that could work with an episodic model. It's way, way more interacting with the consumer type language, which is not good language, honestly. It's the kind of language of people who don't look at an overall vision that matters. And it's not hard to understand why you might hear something like this worded in the way that he worded it, where it's about our ability to engage with consumers on an ongoing basis. And I'm guessing they'd probably still sell the games at 60 bucks a pop because let's just be 100% clear, they can. EA did it with Anthem, and although they really pissed everybody off, they sold a ton of copies of this game. And imagine if Rockstar did the same, but a little bit better, to the point where people are like, well, there's some good bones here at least. And let's just be clear here, the reason why Rockstar games are as long as they are is because the people who make those games make them that way. Up until now, they've not really been pressured to do it another way. However, when they made Grand Theft Auto Online, it became a tremendous financial success. And in the corporate world, the world of Take-Two Interactive, game publisher, and not the world of the team inside Rockstar Games working on a game, there is nothing but the pressure to continue to make more money. And let's just be clear, although Grand Theft Auto V has sold a tremendous number of copies over the years and continues to make them money as a standalone product to this very day, they've had to do less with Grand Theft Auto Online while making more money on an ongoing basis. And that's without having to sell more people Grand Theft Auto Online. It's the same people who are still playing the same game. And when you think about that, it really colors exactly what the CEO of the publisher, not the director of the game, is saying we want more releases and talking with the language of the live service model. The get them addicted and keep them around talk, as opposed to the make a great piece of art that people will want to buy talk. And let me just be clear, like, when these AAA companies actually make a game with a beginning and an end and a certain value proposition for the price, that doesn't make it automatically good. I could see why they might want to avoid having to do as much work, invest as much human labor that you have to pay for in these products that ultimately end up really showing whether or not they were crafted with love, as opposed to these live service products, which let's grant the concession, they're not even talking about making a bunch of Grand Theft Auto online style games and say they're talking about breaking up the content of a Grand Theft Auto, a fully contained open world where a story should be able to play out in at least somewhat of a non-linear fashion. Let's say it's an entirely narrative driven live service product. The potential to attempt to keep people along for, let's just say, filler chapters increases, in my opinion, exponentially. Yeah, I understand there's some filler stuff in pretty much every massive game. I go through it because it's basically part of the game. But in this scenario, it would be something that you'd have to pay to experience on top of what you already have. And you would have to pay for that to get to the next interesting part. And again, that's making the assumption they aren't just trying to go live service crazy here. Which I'm gonna go ahead and say, every company is probably experiencing at least some kind of pressure to do currently. And unfortunately, that's the relationship that Rockstar is in with Take-Two. Take-Two is the parent company. They call these things parent companies for reasons. They can tell the child company what to do. Now, one of the obvious answers would be, this is exactly why Rockstar should go totally independent. And while in principle, I absolutely agree with that. Get them the hell out of there. If this 
consumer engagement language is being used to direct what types of content they make, and Rockstar puts together these amazing, huge open worlds, which, critical of the content as though many people may be, are a really amazing feat, both artistically and technologically. If they're directing that with the consumer engagement type rhetoric, I feel like it's basically impossible for that not to diminish the quality of what they're doing in some way. But still, the further up the ladder we go, the more we see the attempt to devalue human artistic labor and creativity because they want to make more money. And they already make so much money, it's hilarious. If you want more on that, watch the video we made about how big Rockstar Games is. They are not in need of money. Take-Two is making so much money from just letting Rockstar Games do what they want that it should be obvious that's just what they should do. And here, they're trying to hide the fact that they want more products with less content by basically creating their own problem, namely that there isn't enough content so they can sell the solution to you in more content. It's gross and it's gonna degrade the quality of basically all of the content. And when we're talking about Rockstar Games, a game studio that, frankly, for a very long time, the majority of the gaming public has loved, a massively influential company that has changed the face of gaming more than once, I just don't want to see that happen. Like, forgive me for being a little bit paranoid because of the words he uses. They're the kinds of words that people use when they're just trying to fleece you, though. They're words that are intended to sound good, but not be good. And that's never an indicator that good things are coming. Listen to me, we don't want to kill any of you, but trust me, we will. Wake them up a little! But what do you think? Leave us a comment, let us know, and if you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell now. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.